The economy is getting stronger and the job market is doing much better than people thought, so much so that it's time for the Federal Reserve to cut back on stimulating the economy. So says Charles Plosser. He's one of the most outspoken critics of the Fed's massive stimulus program. He's also the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia and a powerful voice on the Central Bank's Policy Committee meeting that meets next week. When I asked Plosser today what the, when the Fed should start the exit process, he said the sooner the better. If it was just up to me, I would begin a scaling back, toning down the dial, the volume, a little bit at this next meeting. I think the economy can stand that, and I think it's justified based on the improvements in the economy since last September. Why are you confident that the U.S. economy can withstand this policy change as soon as the June meeting? I don't, I, I don't see that a change, a small reduction in the pace of purchase will have that much effect on the economy at all. Financial markets will react. You know, there'll be some volatility, presumably, and they'll react. But the person on Main Street and the person looking for a job or the company trying to hire a person to, for a job will largely be uninfected by this, I think. Why not wait until the economy gets a lot stronger? Well, we could always do that, but then the risk is, is that you get behind the curve and interest rates begin to rise very fast. All the reserves and, and that, we pr that we've created in the banking system begin to flow out of the economy. That would be a good sign, except that's going to risk very much higher inflation down the road. So what are your thoughts on today's news that Standard & Poor's has raised its outlook on U.S. debt from negative to stable? What so is that I, telling you? I think that's a positive sign, but, but fundamentally we haven't, we haven't solved our fiscal problem. We, still, we are still on an unsustainable fiscal path. Congress has done nothing to really address that at this point. It still needs to be addressed. So while it's favorable, it's not a, it's, I don't really believe we've solved our fiscal crisis. What do you think are the chances that your colleagues on the Fed will vote at next week's policy meeting in favor of cutting, starting the process of cutting back on stimulus? Yes. Well, you, you can read their speeches as well as mm -hmm. I can, and many mm -hmm. of them have talked mm -hmm. about it. Judging how we calibrate the degree to which we turn up the dial or turn down the dial is something we don't have a lot of experience with or mm -hmm. much theory to to judge on. So we're doing this by through judgment and through discussions with our with each other and our colleagues talking about how do we think about that and it's a bit it's a tricky problem. So if it doesn't happen at the June meeting, could it happen by let's say September? Sure. Sure. The longer the economy continues to improve, the more comfortable will the committee feel that it can dial this back without having adverse consequences if that's what they're afraid of. Looking at the markets, uh, we've seen how the mere discussion of uh, removing stimulus, what it's done to the markets, what do you think uh, the reaction will really be once the Fed does something? It depends on which market it is. Different markets will react differently. There are many people out there who would, who would welcome it. Uh, some further rises in, in the uh, increases in the interest rates and the long-term rates if we got out of this. Are you worried that there could be a big stock sell-off once the Fed really starts this process? No, I'm not. Why not? If the market is doing well because households are doing better, because the housing market's doing better, because firms' profits are still strong and they have lots of cash, their balance sheets are strong, then there's no particular reason why the market should sell off. And if it does sell off, I think you have to ask the question, well, gee, was all of that really real or was it, was, was it just ephemeral? I'd like to ask you a little bit about the housing market because I'm wondering that how these higher rates could impact the still fragile housing recovery. I think the reality is, is that we have to withstand those things. We're having housing prices rising, you know, depending on which index you look at, 8 to 10 percent a year, year over year right now. We don't want to get so far in to uh, a boom in the housing market that we create the problem that we had uh, five, six years ago. Are you worried about a bubble brewing in the housing market? Well, no, not yet, but the housing market is strong right now. It's very strong right now. So why not take the opportunity when a market is strong to pull back somewhat from your support of that market so that it begin, can begin to stand on its own feet and not rely on monetary policy to kind of keep it alive because I don't think that's that's not what's happening right now I don't think let's say that the housing market does stumble would you be in favor of pumping in more stimulus 
Probably not. I'm not worried about small rises in mortgage rates that might be attributed to this to, to break that process down. It's, I think it's underway. Mm -hmm. We've seen that the rate on the 30-year mortgage is now over 4%. Right. Where do you think that rate will be by, let's say, the end of the year? Oh, I don't predict those kind of things. What, what we do know is that even at over 4%, slightly over 4%, historically, that's a very low mortgage rate. <laughs> very low by any stretch of the imagination. And Federal Reserve policymakers start their two-day meeting next Tuesday, June 18th, and Chairman Ben Bernanke will hold a news conference on Wednesday to answer questions on Fed strategy.